Well, the Cosby Show was born out of several reasons. I had a and have and have. I had a unique relationship with Marcy Cosby and Tom Warner from their days at ABC and their days of starting out in the independent producing business. And we did a show together that I represented with Madeline Kahn, the first show they did. Madeline Kahn, who was an extremely talented lady, um, did a great job. The show worked, but didn't work quite well enough. Um, and they worked hard on that show, and they tried to make it work, and it got very close. I don't know what else there is to say. It just didn't go any further. They came into my office one day and said, Let's, we're going to do another show. Who you got? Like I was in the grocery business. So I started to go through names, and I said, Bill Cosby, I think we'll do a show. Oh, we love Cosby. I said, but he wants a lot of money. I don't know how you can afford him in a half hour. That's why I'm talking about doing an hour show with him. Well, how much money? And I tell him it was a lot of money. Well, let's see. The next thing we know, they love the idea. And we're going to go have dinner at Cosby's house. So they got an idea. And we get there, and Cosby had an idea. And Cosby's idea was that he would be a limousine driver. His wife would not speak English. She would be Spanish. And after we got through that part of the dinner, we quickly got to what they wanted to do and switched his thinking. And then came, once he said yes, that we had to figure out how to make this deal work because the amount of money he needed to draw. We got Viacom to contribute, and Marcy and Tom, to their credit, took the bit the bullet and uh, gave up whatever and went on the hook. And we then sold the show to NBC, and in the midst of thinking we closed the deal, NBC changed their mind, and we didn't have a deal. And I said to Marcy and Tom, well, this gives us a chance to go to ABC where you got your relationships, and they're going to be pretty ticked off that you never came there. So we took the idea to a meeting at ABC with Lou Ehrlich, who liked the idea but only wanted to give us a pilot. And I couldn't convince Ehrlich or his people that what it would cost to do a pilot, we could do six shows. Aren't you better off with six shows than a pilot? I was struggling to keep this thing alive. And we got in, you know, while we're doing this, we got NBC to stand up to the deal they made. They thought they made. Um, Marcy and Tom then produced a 17-minute presentation, and it was marvelous. And Cosby was very involved, and so were the writers at the time, and the rest was history. I mean, and the uniqueness of the situation was that for the first and probably only time I, as an agent, got that involved with the show because of my relationship with Marcy and Tom, that when it came time to think about syndication, I sat through all those negotiations, which an agent normally doesn't do, and fought with Viacom, which were very good to us in the beginning, to give us the right numbers and the right figures, and we made a hell of a deal, uh, and Marcy and Tom were off to the races. And, you know, they had a lot of, it was not easy. Cosby wanted to shoot the show from New York. He didn't have creative talent enough to have, so they were shipping people in and out. They had to go in and out at this rush disrupted their life. There was always one of them there. And the show was on, what, eight years or seven years? And uh, extremely well done. And for its time, you know, it created new history and new groundbreaking and, and success and dollars and, uh, and value. And as a result of it, bore the spinoffs with Malcolm Jamal Warner and uh, Lisa Bonet and... Uh, the little girl whose name I, I can't think of at the moment. So there were a lot of spin-offs. And Cosby was very strong about his feelings that he wanted to be real. He wanted to do a show with jokes for jokes' sake, to come out of character. And he was he was tough and usually right. And Marcy and Tom, to their credit, handled him very well. I'm sure, you know, I don't know that they agreed with everything he wanted, but or they would talk their position. But they ended up developing a hell of a relationship. Um, 
and it was great to be around a show that was doing that well. That was, you know, giving birth to many other shows. It was great for the agency. A lot of money was made by everybody involved. People were talking about sitcoms were dead because the only reason they were saying they were dead because they weren't working. The particular shows were not working. So there would seem to be a rush by the networks to let's just do our shows, the dramas. You can't have a schedule with just our shows. And, it, you know, the reason they weren't working, the shows weren't good enough. So there was a fear and a concern about putting half hours on. And along came Cosby and disproved the, you know, the concern and brought back the sitcom to life. So uh, that was a turning point. But it, 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 something else would have come along. There was no, you know, sitcoms were not going to be dead forever. I mean, I think the industry and the, and the entertainment business is cyclical and things go away and then they come back. But a form like that couldn't be couldn't couldn't go on without it. But nothing was working, so that's why the expression came along: "The sitcoms are dead." <laughs>